How are you all doing? Everybody's is coming in. I think I still have sleep lines on my face, so I don't know how to get rid of those, actually. Um, maybe don't sleep. Uh, my name is Todd Burke. I'm with Adobe Systems and a solutions consultant, which means I work with customers and, and partners and a variety of different people to bring Adobe's solutions to you all. Uh, Jerry, my colleague and friend, is joining me today, and we're gonna talk about Creative Cloud Services. What do you do, Jerry? I, uh, I'm a product marketing manager, so all the spin that you see is basically just me coming up with fancy words. Um, no, I, I was actually a solutions consultant like Todd, going out into our, the Adobe customer base of users um, who were mostly in large enterprise organizations. So I think our first question before we get started with our presentation is, uh, maybe we could just see a show of hands in the room of who here works in a large organization of say 3,000 people or more, like an enterprise. Wow. All right. It's over half. That's over good. half, excellent. Uh, and uh, those of you that have, or any of you, not necessarily with enterprises, how many of you have actually worked with Creative Cloud libraries? Oh, good. All right. Awesome. So let's change this to cut your session time in half. <laughs> that might be the new session. So uh, one of the things, so that's great. Um, I hope this may be a little bit repetitive for some of you that are already using uh, libraries and perhaps uh, new for others. What I thought I'd do is uh, show just a video that we, you, if you were at Max last year, you will have seen this video, but this underscores a bit of what I think is really quite interesting about uh, libraries. So let me hit play here. For us, without Creative Cloud, we wouldn't be able to do pretty much any of our work, from Photoshop to Illustrator. It's the foundation of everything we do. Finally, we can connect artists together. We can have them share elements, and they can have everything that they need at their fingertips. Creative Cloud really helps people work the way that they want to work. Given the diverse time zones that we're in and cultures, and it's really important that people have that freedom to work the way in which makes them most successful. Branding is key in everything we do. And we have guidelines, obviously, as an enterprise. One of the challenges is trying to let all of our designers know what those guidelines are and stay true to them. Uber is spread out all over the world, and we have small teams in each region, each, each city, and we're constantly onboarding new people. There is some challenges in maintaining consistency in terms of the brand experience, and it can be a brand manager's nightmare. And our graphics are constantly evolving and trying to stay one step ahead of ourselves. Before libraries, we would store everything on a local server and then hope that everyone's pulling the latest version. We were using anything from a USB stick, email attachments, but if some people's email were clot was too filled up, the USB stick was lost along the way. The tools that Adobe provides us with Creative Sync and the entire Creative Cloud allows us to build a library for all of the brand elements. It allows all of these different teams to instantly drag files into Creative Cloud libraries. It just saves time, it's more efficient, and it allows for more real-time changes to occur. We have a large set of team logos for every single sport. And when we want to update one of those logos, we just have to change it you know, one place and it just gets updated everywhere. And the one thing that I've noticed as we've integrated Creative Cloud the past couple of years is uh, the efficiencies across my entire organization and how that's translated into a higher ROI for us. We're incredibly excited about how having Creative Sync and having Creative Libraries will allow us to onboard people a lot faster. It enables our teams to be efficient, to do great work, and that's really critical for us and our success. I definitely see Creative Cloud having huge potential for the future. It not only saves us valuable resources, but it allows us to move on to the next project that much quicker. And it allows us more time for actually creative freedom and working the project and getting the best possible asset that we can create out of this. So there's an example of uh, three examples of libraries in use in Creative Cloud services. So what we wanted to do today is walk through a uh, handful 
of use cases and introduce a couple of different things. But I wanted to go back in time just a little bit. Anybody recognize this? Do you still have it? Anybody actually still have this box at home somewhere? Maybe like in an acrylic case with lights on it and <laughs> stuff. Uh, quick quiz, who remembers what's in the box? Sam, 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 Sam. User manual, floppy disks, CDs, DVDs, okay, what else? We got the books, we got the disks. There were two other things that came in the box. Depending on the version, I think some boxes had stickers or other prizes, maybe a color matching card. I forget what the prizes are additional, not prizes, but. Discount, discount for things. Yeah, for the uh, Todd and Jerry comedy hour at eight o'clock in the morning. Um, so what was also in the box was the registration card and the serial number. Now, does anybody remember filling out the registration card? One person. Yes. There's always one. If I actually had a prize for you for that, I would give it to you. We, st we um, still have your name. <laughs> we know a lot about you. Uh, but it's a little bit different now. We had a box of software then. You would fill out the registration, and we would talk to you in about a year when we had an update. You'd get that through the mail, and we'd say, hey, we have an update. Do you want to buy the upgrade? And we'd ship you the upgrade. But that frequency was substantially less than it is today. Today, you're interacting with Adobe all day, every day. And what you're ultimately doing is working in a design environment, in what is the creative ecosystem called the creative cloud. And there are a substantial number of pieces to this cloud. Clearly, there are the desktop applications. We're going to show you those desktop applications. And by the way, we're going to publish this deck later. So for those of you taking pictures, um, I'm usually also the guy taking lots of pictures, so I remember. Uh, we'll have a link at the end of this for you to grab the slides. Using an Adobe service to publish InDesign content called Publish Online. But you still install the applications. Now, we've also added additional applications, namely the ones on your mobile device. You, we heard at the keynote yesterday a substantial amount of investment in the mobile devices, the desktop applications, and how all of these things work together. So this is not just a box of software with a registration card where we ping you once every 12 to 18 months. It's a whole different world, and you're working in that world. Now, there are certain things within this universe that are really important, right? Um, getting a file, or we're going to call it an asset, but getting an asset from your device into your desktop application is, well, the, without the Creative Cloud, it's a little bit difficult. Um, the Creative Cloud and the Creative Online and Creative Sync capabilities are what make that design environment actually work. So we have different aspects of this where um, you can, for example, work in Photoshop and share an asset to your colleagues, and that's called Creative Cloud Libraries. You can share various things in there, like brushes, character styles, vector graphics, bitmaps. That's what we're going to do for our demonstration here shortly. Uh, but it's really, like I said, a very important, it's a design environment where all of these things work together. And we're working very hard to get the, the plumbing out of the way so that you don't really have to see a, uh, if you want to share a color with a colleague, so that you don't have to go in and figure out the RGB values or the hex values, send it to them in an email or Slack, and then they type it in, or you look it up in a, in a, in a style guide. All of that is now within this world. Now, what do, we, we call these sharing capabilities creative sync, or they're also called creative cloud services. Oh, thank you. So, it, in this environment, now this is really not intended for you to read. This is intended to be a follow-up uh, item. The services that are in the Creative Cloud uh, environment, I'm going back and forth between these, there are quite a few, and they're constantly evolving. We're adding new features over time, not every 18 months, sometimes significantly faster. Uh, we're adding new services, and we're expanding existing services. The very first one, for example, those of you who, how many of my Lightroom users do I have? Lightroom lovers, that's me. I'm, a light, I'm in Lightroom all day, every day. Um, we've changed Lightroom significantly in the mobile version of Lightroom, whereas 
recently, you start to see your controls on the right-hand side, just like you do in the desktop version of Lightroom. So there are many type kit for the ability for you to go out and grab fonts and so forth. I'm not gonna cover all of these, but there are many different services that we're adding. Now, they all work, a, some of them work the same and some work a little bit differently. They all depend on one thing. They all depend on you logging into the Creative Cloud with your identity. Since half of you are with enterprises, unfortunately some enterprises have not rolled out the identity portion of the Creative Cloud and we give enterprises a slightly different um, set of tools to do that. Uh, I believe, I can't remember if we put the IT guide in here. Did we we, did. we, we did. did, we did. And maybe we, maybe we should ask, for those of you who raised your hand who are in these large enterprises, which was like over half of you, how many of you sign in to the Creative Cloud when you sit down at your desk with an, a federated ID, like your LDAP or your Active Directory ID that you sign into everything else for your enterprise with? Right, so significantly fewer hands yes. go up. Um, and that's something that Todd and I focus on is helping enterprises uh, you know, realize the return on investment by allowing them to leverage their identity systems instead of the Adobe ID where we see, you know, where we keep hold and control of passwords and identity. So, and there's a section in here. Here's the good news, it's eight, 27 in the morning, we all probably had a fine night. Like I said, I'm still trying to get sleep lines off my face. We are not going to be covering how to connect your enterprise to LDAP. <laughs> that is gonna be two doors down. Needless to say, we just wanted to give you a sense of what these services were. Somehow we did not license that image. Oh, right. bummer. So it's Adobe Stock, we do license these images, but we didn't on this one, but the good news about Adobe um, InDesign and publish online is that I can go back, license this image, and then publish it. Now, let's talk a little bit about collaboration, right? So collaboration, in some ways, you probably all have systems that you work in. Um, some of you may have a collaboration room. Some of you may have uh, folders on uh, within Dropbox. Some of you may use Box. Hopefully many of you, you are using the Creative Cloud, but there's always a bit of frustration. This is. I think the keyword search for this was frustration. Or head exploding, I, I think. Head it, <laughs> we weren't trying to be morbid, but that may have been head exploding, I forget. Um, I just chose to go with frustration. Right, I like that. Uh, get higher ratings when you're not talking about violence. Um, <laughs> needless to say, this is kind of many people's situation when collaborating, whether it's at the point of ideation where you're trying to aggregate looks and feels and colors and the mood of what you're trying to do, or the production work, actually going from an ideated piece into a piece that's gonna go into production. And this is applicable across virtually all of the creative endeavors you're gonna have. Um, the, and I tend to make a bit of a distinction between those doing just upfront ideation work on a piece or a campaign and those doing production work downstream. What we wanted to talk a little bit about today is what we're hoping to do to make you faster. So those of you who uh, read the session notes, this is about cutting your design time down. Now, we're gonna show demonstrations of how we did that, and these are gonna be examples of ways that you can work. We arrived at the fairly bold claim that we can cut your design time in half using these services because we hired an external third-party analyst to actually test these capabilities. Um, his name is Andreas Pfeiffer, and we gave him the scenario that we thought most people would use, and he went out with a group of engineers, created a test and ran it several times, and determined that with libraries alone, users using libraries and having their primary, but not all assets in a library, mostly for drag and drop, were seven times faster in that scenario that we created. And this is, the scenario is in the report. Some of you might already be faster. I've had people say, well, we work off of templates for everything we do, and we've got a strictly designed set of templates for all of our files. How many of you guys start everything with a template? Four. <laughs> so I had a peer of mine saying that the report was completely invalid because everyone starts with a carefully crafted and temp template, and this is less than 1%. So I think we can go back to this peer and say comfortably, thank you, that Yes. We're kind of on the mark with these numbers. Now, if it's not seven times, if, even if we cut some of your d design time, but maybe not half, um, you can maybe come back later. So, what are we gonna focus on today? 
books? We are going to talk about <laughs> books with no titles, actually. <laughs> and we're going to talk about tiny ladders. <laughs> That's tiny ladders. You know, I put this image in here, and I only just now saw the tiny ladder, Jerry. Oh, um, so cute. There's a metaphor there, but I'm not going to search for it. So Creative Cloud Libraries is the the, the hub of all of these things. It's the rug that ties the room together. It's uh, where all of these assets go. Now, I, it was in a meeting just yesterday where I had a, one, of, one of your colleagues, one of our peers, said, you know, it's an unfortunately named feature because it prevents people from arriving at the feature since it sort of implies something a little bit older and a little bit static. Libraries are not static. Libraries are a bit dynamic and well, that's what we're going to talk a little bit about. So we, this is maybe our <laughs> weak attempt at a creative brief. Jerry and I were trying to think of, like, how could we possibly come up with a project that maybe is fun and slightly cheeky? And we decided, well, we actually have to make some content for you. So we're just going to combine our two efforts, kill two birds with one stone. And <laughs> we're, our brief is to make these slides. That's our brief. Um, we thought maybe we could send a rocket to Mars and do something like that, but instead, we're gonna show how we actually used the Creative Cloud libraries for this specific project, mostly because it's our most recent project, and talk a little bit about that and walk through. So this is the session. Hopefully, you're in the right room, and this is what you had signed up for. Welcome. Yeah, well, thank you. Is there anybody here that was hoping to figure out how to extend their design time by twice? <laughs> I didn't think anybody was going to be here for that. So basically, we're just going to make our stuff. Now, what I thought we'd do is work on three parts of this. We're going to talk about another one we forgot to license. I thought we licensed it. I, I thought um, we did, but we'll figure it out. What's going on here is there are different places in the process that you can use libraries. We're going to start with using them in the ideation phase, when we're just sort of trying to come up with images, a look, a feel. Um, what do you guys do for ideation when you're first starting? What, what are some of the tools? Sketch, paper, uh, mood board, look at stock, Google images. Is there coffee out yet this morning? I don't know. <laughs> I drink coffee to ideate. I told you we should have gotten everybody like a, it was a little five hour thing, so, um, something like that, uh, or 75 minute. Beverage, that would have been good. <laughs> I could have used it. Anyway, so what, we're going to start with ideation. We're going to go into, once we've ideated over some of these things using libraries, then we're going to finish it with brand. And then we're going to talk just a little bit freeform around where else in the ecosystem Creative Cloud libraries might help you in your design. So, um, and I just, Jerry and I called an audible right before this, and I thought we would preview how you might acquire 3D stock from Fuse, because that may be the coolest thing we're possibly doing. My apologies to those of you who are doing UX, but you did see the UX libraries yesterday. So there you go. Did I miss anything? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, I think it bears repeating, though, that if there's something that you see that you'd like different, or something that you've wanted, like a feature or a capability, Something that you see, we happen to sit next to the product managers for these things. So let us know. Tell us. I tried using it. It didn't work. You know, or I want to be able to copy this into there. Whatever it is, just we, let us know. We, we happen to sit next to these people, uh, and they need to hear feedback from this session specifically. So you guys are on the hook to come up with some good... Feedback. Or for that matter, for those of you that are practitioners living with these features all day, every day, if we get something wrong, just let us know and we'll course correct. We are not necessarily the experts, but hopefully going to give you guys a place to start at the end of uh, our session today. All right. So this is, I'm just putting a blank screen as our mood board example. Um, the first place that I'm going to start is I'm going to go into Photoshop. And you'll note a couple of different things on my machine here in Photoshop. I am logged into the Creative Cloud. All of you have the Creative Cloud desktop applications. Uh, what's also going to be fun is Jerry and I are both risk takers. 
we were going to try to parachute in literally to the meeting today just to you know, get everybody awake, but they wouldn't let us do that. So instead, we installed all the 2017 applications last night. So about the same level of risk, right? <laughs> um, but needless to say, but anyway, that's the good news is they all installed fairly quickly. My hotel, no. Your hotel, yes. So uh, that was very quick. So what I'm going to do is just create a new document. Now, we all know that the new document um, interface has changed because we've added and integrated templates. This is one of the coolest things that we've done in a while. So part of your ideation process, you can derive a template. And remember, we're talking about Creative Cloud services. This is a service sent to your instance of Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, wherever templates are supported, right in the application. You don't have to go online, search for InDesign templates, download a zip file, put it in a folder, open it up, do whatever. Um, we're now putting these, now that it's not the sum total of all great templates in the world, but it's a place to start. And who likes a blank page? None of us like it. Well, maybe a few of you like a blank page. Um, maybe not, but. Th this, was, this was another thing that used to be in the box. That's right, actually. And stickers. Yeah. We don't give out stickers. <laughs> I mean, that's the hard part. So I'm just going to pick a size. I'm not actually going to pick a template right now. Does anybody want me to pick a template? I guess I can pick a template. Um, let me start with a blank page because that will help a little bit. Now, um, inside this environment, now we created a Creative Cloud library to um, kind of ideate amongst ourselves. But for this exercise this morning, what we're going to do is create um, a Creative Cloud library from start. So um, there's a way to zoom in every time I click on something, but it trips me up every time I do it. So hopefully you guys are able to follow along um, where I'm pointing. Um, and I don't have mouse pose. Let me maybe run that. Let me just do that for you guys. Is that what's running? And that is, uh, don't see nothing. there we go. Okay. So to find, not in the mouse pose menu, Creative Cloud Libraries, it is this um, feature in the dialog in the uh, window drop down. So if you don't have it in your workspace, you're just going to go to Creative Cloud Libraries and pull it up. All right. So now um, I have uh, let's turn that off. I have a number of different libraries here that I've been using for various projects. But as I said, we are going to create a new library. And what did we say we were going to call it? Um, stickers. Uh, stickers. This has absolutely no relevance, but we're going to make it anyway. This is all real time. Stickers <laughs> are awesome. <laughs> Something weird. Um, Max S3424. OK, so I'm going to make this library. Now, some of you might say, and I've had a lot of questions technically, um, if anybody of you are in prepress or in the production side more so than the ideation side, folders and organization matters. We understand that. We know that. Um, these libraries are created, yes. Nobody got that. That one fell flat. They're created, but you don't necessarily need to know, and we don't provide you access to the path of the folder on your computer, because once I put something in the library, that item is in the library and synced to the cloud. But Think of it as a bit of a virtual folder. So everything that I'm starting to put in here will, there is a folder on my hard drive, but it's sort of in, you know, library, users, app, whatever. It's really meant to be displayed to you in our applications. So you're going to get to these assets here. Now, a best practice would be that if you want to use libraries for your assets, put them in a library, but keep those assets here. Um, uh, Put them in a library, uh, but reference them, uh, keep another folder on a system of record for those assets. Now, I'm not suggesting that libraries are a dam. Many of you, especially those in an enterprise, probably already have a dam or a file system of record. We are not advocating that libraries replace that. We are advocating the use of libraries to make using the things out of that dam that you most frequently access right at your fingertips. So there's a big distinction. 
I often get, well, wait a minute, I have terabytes of stuff. It's not for that. We're not recommending libraries for terabytes of stuff. It's for out of those terabytes of stuff, your company's logo you probably use on almost everything. Put that in a library. Um, the roughs and the dailies from a video shoot, don't put those in a library. It's not ideal. In fact, you can't. We don't let you. So how about that? Uh, all right. So when we create a mood board, um, uh, we are, and this one, stickers are awesome. Actually, I should have. You know what? Let's just stay on our theme here. You sort of threw me off here. Let's see. You can rename Save uh, time with uh, libraries, something like that, and, and stickers. Random. All right. So I've just created libraries. Let's think of it as a folder in this panel. Now, um, right below the library's name, and I'll just show you this, is a search dialog box. Now, if I drop that down, I can determine where I'm searching. I'm searching stock. I can search my current library or all of my libraries. Now, what's great about what we're doing with these services is we're, we're tying them all together in various ways. So I'm going to start searching stock for um, some things related to saving time. So first I'll just pull up one that says time. And this is now going to search the Adobe Creative, uh, the Adobe stock environment. And it's bringing up different time-based images. So I can scroll through, see what I like. None of them reference exploding time, but that's okay. I don't know. I'm just going to pick a random time image. Now, in the process of doing this mood board, I just realized that I didn't include my friend Jerry in the collaboration piece of this. So Jerry and I are going to collaborate. Many of you probably work together. We're going to collaborate. So what I'm going to do is select here. Sorry, I did that real quickly. I'm going to pull this down again and show you with mouse pose the collaborate link. This means add someone to the library. All right. And turn that off. So now I'm going to add Jerry by email, jsilverm at adobe.com. And this is really cool. We've added um, within the, about the last six months a bit of security on libraries. Now, an ideation library would be something that you probably would want others to participate in by just adding various things. Um, but we have an option that says they can view not edit. So remember that corporate logo instance I mentioned a minute ago? Um, that might be one where you, view, you edit and everyone else views because you don't want people to change or delete an instance of a logo that others are using, for example. So Jerry hopefully will have gotten the invite. And I'm going to do one more thing to the library and then hand it over to him. But he, while I'm actually going on a little bit further about this, he is going to add a few things to the library. So um, we'll see that occur. Now, the way that the Creative Cloud works is I'm using the desktop app. It synchronizes the cloud stuff from my machine to the cloud, his machine to the cloud, his stuff to my stuff. And it's happening behind the scenes. I don't really have to pay attention to that. These synchronization elements are going to occur. Um, one really quick thing about this is we treat we allow you to put more than just files in a library. So every other um, file sync and cloud-based file sync service, Box, Dropbox, all of those, great tools, they synchronize files. So we don't work as creatives in just files. We work with brushes. We work with character styles. We work with color. Creative Cloud Libraries allows you to contain those items. So for example, I, can, I have in the foreground color the black that was there I can add that as an element. So I'm going to go down to the bottom of the Creative Cloud library. And you'll notice right down here an Add button. It's a plus sign. Very convenient. And in here, it allows me to determine the element in my selection that I can add to a library. So I'm just now adding a color. So part of I didn't really quite think that our mood was going to be black. Change that to something a little brighter. But whatever I happen to pick in my color panel, I can add that as a color and so forth. I'll just real quickly put um, some text here. And I, let's see, this, <laughs> this happens to be a font from Typekit called Baller's Delight. 
I use that font strictly for its name. But notice, this is a Typekit font. Now, hopefully we have some Typekit fan type orders. This is really for you. Uh, but I can go in and add other type from Typekit. This is a service. I'm not gonna go through every feature of Typekit just to keep us on time. However, I can add a bunch of other fonts, some of them with names like Hobo Rococo. You want that one in there, don't you, Jerry? Anyway, Absolutely. Can add that font. Use this font. Oh, it's already, it turns out I'm already apparently using that one, Jerry. I didn't know that. All right. So all I want to do now is with, with the text layer selected, I can add the character style. And if I wanted to, the sum text here graphic can now all be added to my library. So I've created a library. Now what's really great about the collaboration portion of this library is that Jerry already has all of those assets. So if you were collaborating with a peer, what would you do? Put them on a file share, okay, that's cool. But if you don't have a file share, you put them in Dropbox, okay, that's cool. Now, you still gotta get them into Photoshop. How do you put a color in Dropbox? You can't. All right, so Jerry is now going to apply the color. If I figure out where Jerry's screen is. Is that Jerry? Yep, that's me. Awesome. So, uh, so Todd, Todd's pressing some buttons over here. Maybe use the mic you had over there. So Todd's pressing some buttons over there. Maybe Todd, you could uh, go ahead into CC Capture, which is the app for iOS and now Android. And uh, maybe you could just, oh, you know what? I need to be in the right library. What is it called again? Uh, save time with libraries and stickers? Yes. Nice, so glad. All right, let's add a nice little color theme here from my camera, or I could just bring it in via my color sliders and color wheel. I'm gonna use a camera. I'm gonna go over to this little panel that helps us switch between Todd's, uh, Todd's computer and mine. I'm gonna come over with my thumb there and grab. I like the red on the corner, All right? That's pretty cool, so I got that one. Let me see, I like that green Incredible Hulk type of color. I like the, ooh, oh, I like when computers crash right in the middle of a demo, it's my favorite part. The intent of this is to show how to get something from the phone, not necessarily go into a full rundown of all features in Adobe Capture, the destination of this color palette capture for this ideation exercise is going to be the library that we just created. So just pick yep. the color. I'm here. picking it, bro. There you go. Just don't tease me. All right, uh, let's see. Do I want these to be RGB, CMYK, et cetera, et cetera? Looks good. I'm gonna call it switcher panel. I'm just doing this with my big fat 45 pixel fingers, and notice that it also happens to uh, save a little thumbnail of the photo so that you can go back afterwards. There we go, I'm all done. I'm gonna come out, come back into Photoshop, and in just two shakes of a lamb's tail, you see I've got my little rotating update, and there's the switcher panel colors, all right? So pretty cool, we've had that for quite some time. The next step in making this is I'm gonna go ahead and start, create a new document in Photoshop. We can just do the default size here. All right, nothing too, too dramatic. I'm gonna drag in one of these hero images. Should I do alarm clock or time spiral? I think time spiral looks better, right? It's kind of more uh, Twilight Zone-esque. Oh God, I'm getting dizzy just looking at it. That's great, and most of us are not awake yet, so. Right, exactly. What's better than coffee with a spiral? 
All right, looks good. Got my smart guides helping me line it up. All right, looks good. Now, um, I might want to mess around with the hue and adjustment, saturation, whatnot. Uh, since this came in, right, any graphics that you have brought in from a library actually come in as a smart object, uh, which is a nice consideration, right? It's kind of an embedded smart object. So as you can see, if it came in from the library, it's got that little cloud icon. Um, and notice it is a smart object thumbnail, right? So if I wanted to edit the actual original, I could double click and now, right, I've got a locked background and I'm actually editing the original. And if I were to save this original back into my, if I were to just you know, mess around here, click Command S or Control S on a PC, uh, I'd come back to my library and that asset, the changes would actually be added to that asset, which is pretty cool. Um, and that's, those are smart object basics, right? We're all familiar with that. But I'm actually working with an instance of that smart object. I can do all kinds of crazy stuff. I'm just gonna use the camera raw filter, right? Everybody loves camera raw, including Todd, right? I, don't, I just wanna mess around with the hue and saturation just a bit. Um, you know, well, you know what? I'll make it even simpler. I'll just cool it off a little bit. Right, that's much better. And uh, what's my next step, Todd? You're gonna save it. All right. But I'm not. I'm not just gonna save it anywhere. I'm gonna save it in my Creative Cloud assets, which is right here, in our Max session. Right. I'm just gonna call it uh, Clock Spiral. Dot PSD. All right. There we go. And that should start syncing up. Not too huge of a file to be concerned with. Actually, it was a new folder, I thought, didn't you? Oh. Oh, right. Yep. Yep. So actually, I'm going to save it there, and I'm going to make a new folder. And what are we calling this, Todd? We're calling it uh, uh, saving stickers. Oh, I'm sorry, saving time and stickers. No, saving time. There we go. Drag that in the clock spiral. There we go. I can see that over here in the lovely and wonderful Adobe Bridge. Who here uses Adobe Bridge for their daily asset management? Only a couple. That's sad. That will change. Yep. So there it is, right? right. I, can, uh, I can take a look at that right over here in my finder, which will allow me to. Uh, you see I've got a nice little transit bar telling me that it's taking just a moment to upload. I get a nice little check mark telling me that it's done. And I can right click and I can collaborate with Todd. Now, I, I'm not gonna collaborate with him just yet on this asset, right? Because I'm still working on it. But if I, I wanna let him know that it exists, right? It, this is still my precious, precious first ideation step. So he doesn't need to see it quite yet, right? Well, like we all know that when we're ideating, sometimes it's good to collaborate and sometimes it's good to just have your own little corner. Um, you know, where, where you're you know, doing your own thing and then bringing it to the team. You might have an hour, you might have 10 minutes. Uh, but one of the things I can do is uh, either share that asset or share that folder to Slack. Does anybody here use Slack? Does anybody here wish Slack had threading? Hmm. Yeah, sorry. Everybody. Just a little snark for the Slack folks. Um, right, so if I wanted to share this to Slack, which is uh, just yet another of the enterprise messaging uh, applications, I would just create a public link and notice that Adobe Creative Cloud is actually integrated directly with all of my Slack channels, um, with anyone who I'd want to send a direct message to. So, um, you know, it has all of my users. I'm not going to bring it up uh, and show you my list of users. Uh, they might not appreciate that. But even if I have private groups in Slack um, or I have a user list, I can send that around and say, hey, uh, here's the folder with my ideation content, right? And then just share that folder. It would produce a link that would go, it, it would actually send to Todd immediately from within the Slack client uh, on the web or you know, on the desktop or on mobile. So pretty cool integration. Uh, Todd, what's next? You're gonna hit the collaborate button from right. there. And now instead of, so right, there's a difference between sharing to Slack which is just me al alerting him to the existence of the folder and actually collaborating, right? And collaborating again, uh, as Todd was mentioning, you can, I, I can allow him to now edit 
if I feel that over Slack he appreciates you know, the direction of the art and uh, I want his contribution now, or I can just let him view it to be a little bit more protective of the content and say, here's the direction I'm going, I'll let you know when I'm done. Right? How many times do we get asked for updates before we're ready to share anything? So I'm just going to all right, just send it to Todd, click invite, and now he is invited. And he can edit it, um, I suppose, because we're friends. Uh, all right. Excellent. Is that, was that the, my, my last little piece, or do I have more? You, the, uh, you're just going to drag it into an InDesign file and save that real quick. Yep, that's right. Okay, so I'm going to open up InDesign CC 2017 for the first time. Uh, after having downloaded it last night. So this is going to be a fun experiment for everybody. Has anyone downloaded these yet? All right. I guess that's an homage to juggling. I don't know. It's pretty interesting. We decided we weren't going to offer any commentary on that launch screen. Right. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know where they... Move on. Um, so again, I'm gonna just going to start a new document without facing pages since we are now going to start working on the actual deck that you guys will receive. Uh, the intent, sure, print is fine, letter size is fine. We're going to make it, you know, kind of your traditional uh, landscape. Say okay. All right, there we go. And uh, now I can just come over to my CC libraries and that time image should be right there. Oh, if I have the correct library chosen. There we go. There's my time image. Now, one of the things I didn't do over in Photoshop was drag this back in, which I could do. You're going to actually place it from... Uh, oh, you're right. Uh, you're right. That is, that is a bit of a different workflow, isn't it, though? So what Jerry, the reason that Jerry did not put that cloud in a library, which he could have, when you drag an object from a library, especially a stock image, to a Photoshop layer, it's already a smart object. So we don't allow the ability to have two smart objects. So you can't make it, again, a smart object by putting it back into the library. So this was an, a, an example of showing things that we might do to that Photoshop file, just to give you an, an idea of the fact that when we have a stock instance that we pull from the library, we do a non-destructive edit on it. We're going to go back in just a second and license that image, and you'll see where that goes. But um, all he's going to do is place that there and um, just type in a quick title, and we should be done. Yep. And the title that I'm going to make is Saving Time Cut. Let's see. I'm going to do Cut Your Design Time in Half with Creative Cloud Services. All right. Bump that up just a little bit. Hit escape, make sure I got that selected, and make it Baller's Delight. Is that is that the right? Now, let me pause right there. That was just a font we picked during kind of the ideation step. Pretty sure Adobe brand isn't going to want us to publish this as an Adobe document with that particular font. It's on none of our style guides anywhere. So, uh, But nevertheless, though, him getting that font you can't really share the font and have it install through like a Dropbox or a box, but you can with the Creative Cloud and have it in a library. And notice in the library, it was also all of the font settings that I had applied when I added that to the library. The color, the size, the letting, all of those were included in that. Now, in order to get the brand font or the line guide font, whatever you're working on, you'd have to look at the style guide, look at the sizes, type them in, maybe save it locally, and then actually come back in and readjust that type. Now you don't have to do that. So that's really straightforward. We're gonna switch back over to um, my machine. And uh, I think you may need to reshare that folder you just made, by the way. Okay. Um, so what I wanted to walk through on the, we're gonna switch over to the next step. So we've done this kind of, was it? A little bit of a random ideation exercise, hopefully. Um, the intent was to show you all a little bit about how you can use that library as a bit of a mood board. But here's what's great <laughs> about using it is all of the things that you add in it are subsequently 
useful to you in your design work. So picking a stock item like you might when you do search Google Images for ideas or a stock site, when you use Adobe Stock in a library, it puts the image right in Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign for you to just drag out. Does that feel like a time savings? Yeah? Yeah? yeah. A little bit? Sounds like a time savings. <laughs> That's a huge time savings, right? Because when you do that in a stock site, you drag the unlicensed image to a folder. You've got a folder of a bunch of stuff. Those of you that are organized probably have ideation, draft, final. Some of you have final, 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 final. <laughs> We're not gonna talk about that today because that's a really big problem. But you do, how many of you work off of a brand book, brand guides? Most everybody. And these are screenshots of the Adobe brand uh, uh, book. I didn't want to pull up the entire brand guide because I don't know if I'm allowed to do that, but I did take some of the more relevant items out of the brand book related to this conversation. Um, I have in the past published a couple of different things where I actually broke brand and didn't mean to. Um, in one case, I had published a uh, uh, for a promotion, a t-shirt, and shortly before we ran the t-shirt, and we put the t-shirt on every seat in Oracle Arena, because we were sponsoring the Warriors, and we had the red tag logo, which is an instance of the Adobe logo, and the one that we used, and the one that the Warriors art team used, had the trademark R. And like a week before, that trademark R had been removed by the brand team, so 20,000 t-shirts had the red logo with the trademark R. And we had our executives in for that game because it was a big promotion. So thankfully nobody was upset with me. I highly recommend that you don't print 20,000 t-shirts with the wrong logo. So I've had first-hand experience. Have you heard that? I don't even know if you heard that story, did you? No, but I've seen enough off-brand yeah. Adobe t-shirts. Yeah, that, that wasn't, I worked with brand on that one and everybody missed it. But it was one of those things where the window of time between when the logo had the R, so we used the right logo, but it was a week out of date. Needless to say, I didn't get in that much trouble, probably. I don't even know if I should have told that story, but I did. So for those of you that have done a brand thing like that, um, uh, hopefully you can relate a little bit. So here's what we're gonna do. These are some things in your brand guides. Colors are really important. Uh, you might have iconography for something. Uh, in this case, the way to use the logo is an item usually in a brand guide. In this case, virtually every thoroughly written brand guide has some spacing requirements um, for the logo. And then your character and font treatments. So let's actually make a brand. Um, we're gonna make a style guide, uh, a Creative Cloud library from this set of style guide assets. Now, some of you are wondering, gosh, why wouldn't we call libraries Creative Cloud Style Guides? The answer is, we agree with you. <laughs> all right, so let's do this. And we're gonna, I'm doing all of this from the beginning. And if you recall, I just went up here and I selected um, new and then library. So I'm gonna do new library and we're gonna call it max 3424 style guide, all right? So I've created that. Now, I've taken a couple of snippets from, these are screenshots, and I showed you this before, but here's an interesting thing. I've got the eyedropper, everybody's favorite color collection tool, and you'll notice what it does is it brings the color up in the foreground and with all of the values. Now, in the Adobe brand book, there's a page right after this one that actually has the RGB hex and, and the Pantone, these are the Pantone colors. If I really wanted to use the Pantone libraries, whatever tool you use to dial in your color to the exact specification, make sure you do that. It's a bit more fun because using the color picker is also a little bit faster. The quicker, the picker. All right, so I've got red in my foreground and I'm just gonna say add that color. Let's just go through, we're gonna add that color uh, and you'll see that I'm adding these colors here and I'm placing all of these and so forth. Now, I'm not gonna bore you with adding a bunch of colors. This is not a how quickly can I add color exercise. Um, it's more of just a, this is the way things go into a library. Now, 
These are the things in this library that I just, or the style guide that I just showed you. Um, one of, I'm gonna make a new file here, and notice I'm just using a size that's uh, a bit arbitrary, and I'll say Adobe Clean. This is the, uh, Baller's Delight is not the Adobe font face. <laughs> um, Adobe Clean is, so I'm gonna search Photoshop for uh, Adobe Clean, and you'll see here, and by the way, this is really nice that we've added the ability to do this. Um, I'm just gonna say Adobe Clean, semi-condensed. I'm picking that font. Now, the style guide does specify a number of different types of images, or uh, of fonts in it. I'm just showing this as an example. Now, again, remember, I can come in here and add, um, once I've selected the layer, I can come in and add the character style. I'm not going to add the graphic, which is the text Adobe Clean. I don't need to necessarily use that, but I am going to add the character style. So there we go. Now, one other quick item here is as I start to add brand assets, I can add these brand assets by dragging and dropping the brand asset. I think I did that incorrectly because um, this layer I dragged in from another library to show you guys, so I'm gonna kinda sort of cheat a little bit and pretend that it's a file I had on my hard drive and now we're moving into the world of libraries. I've got a file open in Photoshop and now mm -hmm. I just drag it in. That's how I've added my graphic, for example. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, very good question and um, good repeat. distinction because you're right. Uh, type kit, oh, repeat the question. Uh, if this is a reference to the font, not the actual font files themselves being placed in the library, and that is correct. Type kit will install that font automatically, so in the case of Adobe Clean, it's our corporate font doesn't live in type kit, so we have to manually transmit it to everyone, but if for example, we decided to build our brand around Baller's Delight, then everyone else could install it. So that doesn't ever stop getting funny because I love it's it. just absolutely a if, crazy font. If, oh, if you don't happen to have the asset open on your desktop, but you have it in another library, for example, it's very easy to move those assets over from one library to another. Just about to do that. Yeah. So here's what we have. Now, just to show you if you have other libraries, I actually have in a couple of cases, Here's a library that we've been using called the Adobe Red Tag logo. So one thing that I can do is select an item already in my library, right click and say copy to, and then I think we said this one, right? Did I pick the right one? We got so many of these. I think it was this one that we're working on. So I've now added the Creative Cloud logo. I've added the Red Tag logo. And let's add some of the max stuff. We've got to do the max branding for maximum impact. It's not that one. Let's see. Absolutely. So we're gonna show that. This is the part that we didn't quite have on the outline, but I'll talk mm -hmm. you through it. So mm -hmm. that's a great question. The question is, are these things linked? And we're gonna do that right now. So I'm going to move this other Max um, logo into the style guide. So you see where we're going. We're, I just did a move, not a copy. So um, moving too fast, let's see, that's okay. We probably broke something, but we'll fix it. So these are the items that I have here. Now, one thing that I like to do is show a bit of a dramatic example on how I would um, make, let's say, a logo. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm not going to uh, get started, but I'm gonna just draw what I like to call a, um, uh, a logo, which is just gonna be a box, and I'm just gonna add a color to the box. Actually, let's do something like that. This, let's pretend that we've gone through hours and hours of a laborious illustration exercise to arrive at this awesome logo, which, and by the way, we all know that there are rounded corners now in Illustrator. That gets a big applause every single time. You don't have to this morning. But needless to say, we are going to add into the style guide this logo, 
So what's going to happen is I'm just going to drag this logo into the style guide. So now I've made this style guide. It's a Creative Cloud Library is the technical term for the feature, but it is a style guide nonetheless. Jerry is now gonna go through the exercise of cleaning up the ideation and making it brand compliant using the style guide. Assuming I know which one of these to click. Is it three? It's three, look at that. So he's gonna go into InDesign and very quickly make some changes. Yep, so uh, let's see, Where, uh, which, which file was it? Did you actually? One with a spiral. Right. All righty, did you actually share that library with me? Did you? Oh. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna need that. Forgot to do that, so I'm just yeah. gonna share with him. So, uh, so here's the good news, pretty clearly evident that we are not canning any of this demonstration. Right. Is that okay? Does that make it a little better? Probably should have canned it, because that step I wouldn't have forgotten. So he's gonna get an invite to that here in just a second. Yeah. And you're not, you're gonna go into the one with the clock on it that we just made. Yeah, I'm just making sure that I have this one too. There we go. And there is the ideation one. And as soon as I get my handy dandy invitation, it should show up in my Creative Cloud desktop app. Right? And you can see that I've been, uh, oh, I, and I also have Baller's Delight installed. Um, hmm, where's my, where's my invite, man? Maybe I can come over here. Well, the website. He's the one we made last. Website seems to have seen it. All right, I'll say accept. There we go. If I come back to InDesign, and of course, always, if you don't see what you're looking for, always click and you get the nice little refresh arrows, which will then show you where you need to be. There's my Max 3424 style guide. And th this color that I so lovingly crafted from the buttons on our switcher are pretty obviously not in brand compliance. So I'm gonna zoom out. And I'm going to, oops, actually I have to select that text, make sure that it is, there we go. Now that is ye old Adobe Red of yore. And I will uh, go ahead and change the character style. Oh, right, but the character style, as you might recall, Todd put in in black. So if I wanted to change that around, I would change the character style first get that out a little bit, and then change the color. All righty. So as you may have seen in some of our other assets, right, like we've got the tag up here, we've got the Max logo down there. So I would go in, right, and this is just a standard issue for InDesign, which is creating master pages. And I would go ahead, grab the tag, drop it on top, Make sure it is inside the lines. Make sure that my display performance is at high quality so it doesn't look bad. Drag in my Max logo. There we go, put that down underneath. Well, actually, let's bring that up underneath our guide, or above our guides. If we turn on auto fit, of course, we can go ahead and, oops, kind of drag that up auto fit without any keystrokes. Now that I'm done with that master page, come on back to my normal page. Oh, that looks horrible. But, you know what, Todd? I'm not gonna make this red. I mean, I love the concept, but just kill me. Here's the good news, you have other colors. Yeah. Wasn't that restrictive? And the brand sheriff I don't think is here, so I'm gonna. Right. So um, you're gonna do one other thing. If you could just put that light blue box Yep. Drag it out there and put it anywhere. Anywhere? Anywhere. All right. So what I'm going to do off screen is I'm going to go into the library, and your question was about linking. So this, pretend that, for example, this was just a placeholder for the illustration that had, yet, had not yet been completed. So I, um, working on this particular asset, I'm just going to double click it inside 
inside the library in Illustrator, and I'm going to, what did you do? You went with the orange? Mm -hmm. I'm going to select that, change it. Actually, I can just switch back over. Is it me? No, is it me? So I just changed it. I double clicked it from the library, changed it. I'm now going to save it, and it's saving it in the library. We're gonna go back over to Jerry, and what it's gonna do when the Creative Cloud synchronizes, it's gonna change that particular library element for him when we get through the sync, and then he's gonna zoom out. And notice, it's told him that, hey, do you want to reconcile this difference between what's in the cloud and changed and um, what you have, which was the previous version? And he's gonna say yes, click to update, done. So, that was fast, right? Visual indicator that it was out of date. Did he have to call, reach over the cube, get a thumb drive, do anything weird like that? No. Will it update in, well, so there's only one library. So what it did is for each place that this is used, it'll indicate an update. Now the apps, each reference these just a little bit differently. So what they, what they end up doing is the um, Illustrator automatically places it for you, Photoshop asks you. So what's really important about using this feature in your workflow, if you're gonna be changing what you do in your production environment is make sure that you've tested out these features. But the linking and the link change automatically saves a massive amount of time, so yeah. Uh, yes, it depends on the app though. So I'm gonna switch back over to my screen and show just a couple of things real quickly. So uh, we don't need to see this, so I'll minimize Illustrator. Ten minutes. Um, thank you. So a uh, couple of other things going on. So now this is the uh, actual document that we created for you to follow. And we've placed in here a few different links Actually, before I move off of libraries, we've got 10 minutes left. I am gonna add another angle. So remember I said we had kind of a different place where libraries are being used. Um, I'm gonna show what I think is kind of a cool way to deal with libraries. So has anybody worked with Fuse yet? Fuse, no one's worked with Fuse, all right. So this is gonna be fun. You didn't know I was gonna do this one. This one's gonna be a little bit off script. So. Fuse is a character generation tool courtesy of Adobe's company, an Adobe acquisition called Mixamo. So this is a tool for me to create a person. For whatever reason I need to ideate over a person, I can do that. I now have created this person, I can add clothing, change clothing, but the reason I'm showing you this, I'm not a 3D character animator. The reason I'm showing you this is this button over here to the right to illustrate the point that as new things come along, as Adobe acquires new companies, as new features occur, we're starting to have the teams integrate these features with Creative Cloud libraries. So on this upper, bu upper button here, save to CC libraries, yeah, sure, I could have saved this character to my hard drive, but I'm instead saving her to my library, and watch what happens when I pull up my Creative Cloud library for brand, we now have a branded human being in our library. That is really awesome. So let's do one other quick thing. Let's just play with that just to kind of drive the point home. I'm gonna do a composition in um, 1920 by 1080. So here's a library. And if you wanted to do some sort of an ideation to show how an individual would um, function in a given environment, you can grab from that library this model that you've created. So I'm gonna put her into my library, and there she is. Now, I didn't really, I just made her while Jerry was talking, so I didn't do any kind of variation on her, didn't add any hair, and so forth. I just created this character. Um, there are some really fun things that you can do, again, around branding. So for example, if I wanted to add a logo to her shirt, I'm just gonna drag the Adobe logo um, hope I pick the right size of her shirt. I side. I think I've got the front. Let's 
do it like that. I'm just dragging from the library the Creative Cloud logo, and I'm gonna save it. Oops, place it, save it, close it, and notice that I did it on the back, not the front. All right, let me move my library slightly out of place, and I'm gonna put this on the front of her shirt. Now, what I've opened in the model, and this is kind of more of a, intended to be a teaser, right? But when you, uh, let's see, is it there? Did I say, it? there we go. So I can zoom in on her just a little bit. I've placed a bit of a logo on her shirt. What's really important is all of these things came from the library. I didn't have to call someone who curates models of people or dig through a world where there might be a folder and some hard drive hidden somewhere where character models, I've actually got this model connected from Fuse. The point being, this app, you may never need to animate an individual, but it's tied directly into this environment so that it's so much quicker to do your design work. Now, when a 3D model is made, these are the textures that come in with that 3D model, and I just happen to edit the 2D texture that gets wrapped around the 3G uh, 3D geometry. Now, just to add one more little bit of fun here, I'm gonna go into the 3D workspace. I'm going to select the character, and when we talk about um, Creative Cloud services, the other thing that the Mixamo team has is a character rigged up with all of the joints. And we have character animation data connected to this model and all of the models you create with that tool so that you can, for example, um, in this particular case, animate this character with one button click. And I don't know if this is gonna work, but I'm gonna select a motion over here in the properties menu, which is reaction to getting clipped. So she's just gonna show us that she's slightly annoyed whilst walking along, enjoying her day, and somebody clips her and she's like, what? <laughs> Check out my shirt. Should have left it on the back, I forgot. that I kind of made up my own mistake there. But this is really important. These are the kinds of things we're doing with other libraries. Again, you saw the UX library in XD. That's groundbreaking. That's a very cool implementation of this concept called libraries. A 3D team is using it there, and in fact, they're using it in Felix. So everybody saw Project Felix yesterday. Felix is really incredible, but I can actually search assets from Adobe Stock, find a 3D asset, and use it in my composition. So not only have we put character models in a library, but we're now allowing you to um, search assets. So I can say uh, clock, there's one there already, um, and search, I don't, where is my stock search? Um, what's great about this is it's also allowing us to um, oh, we gotta go into libraries. Uh, it's allowing us to search Adobe Stock, and I can say clock. I don't know if there's gonna be a clock because we just launched this, but see where it says 3D right here? Right here is, wow, there is a 3D clock in Adobe Stock. So if you're seeing your composition, you needed to have this 3D element here. Let me turn that off. These are clocks that we could have worked with. Jerry, which one do you like? The digital Casio one. This one? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna license this, see what happens. Nothing like trying it out real time live in front of an audience of people. This is fantastic. I don't have licenses for stock according to my account, so I need to have them <laughs> added. This was a demonstration of our permissioning system. So we have a couple of minutes left. I'm gonna come back to, but just wanted to show you, and by the way, if I were to pull up Premiere Pro, um, you can get your libraries. So there was a question about where else do these libraries work. Your Premiere Pro, uh, Premiere Pro and After Effects also have the libraries. In Premiere Pro, you can search for video. So you can get video assets in Premiere Pro as well. Yes. So just a caveat, um, but both Todd and I have been around to a lot of customers, both large enterprises and, and small to medium businesses, who experience an issue with libraries time and time again. I think it's really important. It goes to some of the questions that we've had. Um, that it's important to understand that um, when you put take an asset out of a library and you drag it into your document, your Photoshop document, your Illustrator document, InDesign, wh whatever Adobe document you've dragged that library asset into, 
and then you want to share that document with somebody, like Todd and I have been doing, if you share that document with, with that other individual, contractor, freelancer, your boss, whomever, and you have not invited them to collaborate on the library with you, or at least given them read-only access so that they can also access the library, then the link inside of the document that you've shared will not be live. There won't be a live link to the library. Yes? Ah, uh, I was just about to do that. So the question was, we were sharing it with individuals. You were asking about, can you share it with everyone? The answer is yes. We, we didn't do that. We missed excellent that Excellent leading step. question. Awesome question. If I had a sticker, I would give it to you. We can maybe find one somewhere, or I don't know, a prize. If, you go, if you go to Very the Roland booth, if it, the Roland booth is right across from the Adobe store on, in the community pavilion, and they're giving out stickers. Very cool <laughs> stickers. Perfect. They're not giving out puppies. I was mistaken. <laughs> no puppies. Needless to say, I selected in Photoshop um, the drop down menu. So these functions are kind of a little bit buried over here. Selected this, and I hit share link, not collaborate. And that, ten, that takes me back into the browser, and it asks me to do two things. Turn on the make this public, and then determine the manner in which people can use it. So. Do they want to follow this? So let's say you're making a brand guide that you want other people external to your company to use. Turn on follow, because if you change something, they'll get the change. You won't need to email them and say, hey, download from that link again, because I changed it. The follow will just happen, just like it did when we did our changes during Collaborate. And then on the other one is allow them to save. So save off these items. So great question. Thank you for pointing that out. Um, you want to go over some resources? Yeah, about to do that. I was just going to show Jerry this piece right here, just to give you everyone. That's fine. Did I already do it? Pulling up Premiere Pro really quickly is one of those things. Um, let's see. Here's Frame.io, and if I go to Window, Libraries. Here are my libraries, and you'll notice the Max 2016 library, the Max Style Guide library. These are all. There was some question. And if I wanted to search Adobe Stock for, let's say, a clock video, there we go. These are videos with clock. I'm searching, here's one, and I'm gonna add a preview to our library. So now we've got a video in the library as well. How awesome is that? Everything you need right there, the rug that ties it together. So let's take this out. So some of our Best practices are here uh, with regards to libraries. This is an implementation guide. This guide is for those of you that don't have access to these features in your company. This is probably not for you to read um, unless you're really excited about IT best practices. Some of us are. But this, but is, this is for you to take to IT. And and say, hey, yes. there you go. This included in the same email as the IT guys as to why. Why? Because it'll make me seven times faster. Here's how, here's why. Now, um, we just created uh, <laughs> this link moments ago. This is the link to this presentation, should you choose to download it. If you'd like those links. If you'd like the links. How did, how did you arrive at that hyperlink there, Todd? A great question. Remember, this is a session about Creative Cloud services. My apologies for those of you taking pictures. I'll come back. I'll pull it up as we close out. Another service, and again, these services are all over. Libraries is a, Creative Cloud Libraries is technically a type of service. I've shown you the fuse saving to a library. Here's another service that the InDesign team came up with, which is Publish Online. So what we did is we published this document using Publish Online. Do we have InDesign people? InDesign, awesome. This feature is fantastic. It'll publish this, it'll make a link, you send out the link, and if you want to include, according to your preferences for the PDF, the registration marks and all the other necessary items to get this thing printed, it'll also have a downloadable PDF available for your printer, however that may be. We just landed at 9.30. On the exactly. notes. Are there questions? Oh wait, pull up the last slide. The very last slide. Okay. 
Let me close that. Remind everybody. Oh, this slide is the most important. Darn it. And half of you left. So, please, are there questions? Was this useful? That was like, yeah. Awesome. Like slightly. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Hopefully it was useful. There were questions. Yeah. No. That's a, that's a good feature request, though. 